Hey, what's up everybody? It's Pykel with League of Items, and that was weird. Uh, so yesterday we had EDG against V5 and OMG against World Elite. Uh, I had a lot of lineups with EDG plus World Elite, and after EDG 2 0 V5, I was counting my money. Uh, but let's just say things did not go according to plan. Uh, so let's take a look at the first match. So I picked EDG over V5. I think in the eSports Center it was pretty obvious that I was leaning in that direction. I, I said Xiaoshang is even or better in the top lane. Jai Jai against Weiwei is even uh, for the most part. Scout is better than Mole. And then Hope and Mako against Sam D and PP God uh, is closer than most people think. I know that there's a lot of hype around the Big Dick bot lane, but in reality, are they that much better? Uh, no. And I think it's clear because they've been switching out players so uh that always scares me so in this draft we have uh nidalee graves and renekton so they're banning out carry champions from way away which is pretty smart then we have karma set and volibear so three good flex picks we get leeson ash zoe so th three pretty good champions so far leeson a very aggressive jungler uh then we have twisted fate pretty good mid laner not great against Zoe, but they're not playing for the same thing, so it's fine. And then a blind Camille, which is always very risky. Um, probably a bad pick in a vacuum. Uh, Trundle, Orn. So or they just counterpick themselves, which is horrible. Like, that's that's one of the worst picks that they could have made in reality. Like, that is that is one of the, the worst possible picks, is locking Orn into a Camille. It makes absolutely no sense. And then we have Ezreal and Braum. Uh, to stop the Ornhorn, and then we have a Thresh. So, just objectively, looking at this draft, I would say the fact that V5 counterpicked themselves to get Orn means that they, like, lose the draft. And then they also got countered again by getting the Braum. Uh, so I just don't, don't really understand why they would draft like that, but it's kind of whatever. The game, the game was very interesting, uh... EDG managed to build up a gold lead, and V5 started building a dragon advantage. So the big fight's coming up soon. Alright, so, so what's happening here? So basically, Camille has gotten to the point where she where she outscales Horn. She's able to push in and create pressure in the top lane. In order to respond to this, V5 goes for a Risky Baron. And Jai Jai starts to make a, some plays around the Baron. So basically, they just got baited into... Um, they got baited into this. Um, so a pretty stupid play from V5, uh, and it was caused by the draft. So they have nobody to blame but themselves. They are not able to finish off the game. V5 manages to get a dragon off of this, which is kind of insane. Uh, steal a Baron, which is insane. And this is why the kills go so high. Um, but with this gold advantage, EDG is already looking pretty good. Um, in general, I think that the Mountain Soul does outweigh the gold... Not outweigh the gold advantage. The Mountain Soul plus the Orn items outweighs the uh, <clears throat> the lead that EDG has. But now we're set up for one more fight. So let's see how this final fight goes. This should be the final fight. Yeah, so we're starting up uh, Elder Dragon play. Elder Dragon's getting pretty low. EDG goes into contest. Mole is basically kind of out of position and taking a decent amount of damage so let's slow that down uh so where are we at, where are we at right now jai jai is about 50 percent scout is looking for a flanking opportunity xiao shang is looking for a flanking opportunity lee sin just going to go straight at them but it's basically a flank as well so they're getting attacked from all angles which means that their back line is not safe we have lulu ash and we have the zoe right here so these are the three champions that are the priority targets. That's why I, I have said in the past, Orn isn't really a great peeling tank because uh, he can't really force you to attack him. It's, he's just going to be able to create some obstacles that you have to run through, basically, like him running into a wall, which is going to create a zone to knock you up or using his ultimate. 
Uh, so let's clear that and play it out. So Lee Sin comes in, Elder Dragon turns to him. And this is a pretty important part as well. So, so Mole is exhausted and is being attacked by Scout. And then we also have the Lee Sin who's looking for a kick. Um, so the goal here is for Lee Sin to kick uh, the Trundle into the entire team. It does damage to everybody that the champion passes through. Shaoshang still hasn't go in, gone in. So uh, Shaoshang is going to look for uh, a flank still where they can come from over the wall and knock up um, a carry if possible. And they're pretty clumped together, so they're they're pretty fortunate that there wasn't some kind of gigantic AOE ultimate like Kennen. Like if this Camille was a Kennen, that'd be five dead players on B5. But that's fine. So we get the knock up. Sam D is instantly exploded because of all the abilities that just landed. And that sh it should be the fight, but V5 actually does a pretty good job fighting out of this. So PP God's still really low. Two players die from from v5 but at this point you have two carries plus a jungler against uh lulu who's not really going to do anything Orn, who's extremely low health and is going to die because he's getting focus fired uh so not really much for v5 to do and then instead of going for a 50 50 smite they decide to try to kill the trundle which is smart And then they pick up the Elder Dragon, and then the game is over. That's just how League of Legends works, basically. So they ended up getting another Baron. They already had pressure on the base because of Camille uh, taking the inhibitor early in the game and knocking down one of the towers. Uh, and see, this is the this is the look of a guy who knows that he has the potential of getting subbed out. So he's freaked out right now. He doesn't want to get taken out, but uh, it's very possible. And then we get into the last game, and let's just go through this pretty quick. So we have Bard, very good champion. Volibear, overrated champion in my opinion. Twisted Fate, Set, Camille. So now we have to ban a Camille because we don't have a good counter to it, which is insane. Like, Camille is is counterable by most uh, top lane players. They have something to deal with Camille, or at least scale evenly. But, yeah, just not good. Not good. Uh, so they ban out the two carry junglers again. So they view Weiwei as a carry jungler, which is a good thing to keep in mind. They picked Jin. Jin's a horrible, horrible champion. V5 deserves to lose because they picked uh, Jin. Ha ha. Losers. That's that's what we say when they, when they lock in Jin. Ha ha, losers. This guy, big loser. Bad coach. Bad coach. Um, so we get a bard. We get Ash, we get Lee Sin, which is one of their most important champions. We, we get a blind Akali, which is pretty risky. Actually, not, it's not blind. It's an Akali against Syndra, but by picking the Akali, it allowed them to pick Orn, they think, in their mind, because they have to make a blind pick again. But Akali and Silas are good into Orn, because Orn basically gives them a free lane. The Akali one is more difficult, because Orn can kind of punish her, but that's fine. And then, oh, yeah, this game was just a blowout, so nothing to really see there. There's a lot to see there. Uh, what's next? Uh, all right, let's go to the draft for Worldly. And I, I already posted this on Twitter. I think that a lot of a lot of people may want to blame Teacher Ma for the loss today, but it was obviously uh, drafting mistakes that that caused this to happen. They had pretty terrible drafts, in my opinion. <clears throat> Alright. So, let's just go through this, hopefully, pretty fast. Uh, so we have Karma, good flex champion. Galio, one of Teacher Ma's best champions. TF, one of Teacher Ma's best champions. Karma is also okay for Teacher Ma, but not not his preferred style of champion. Volibear gets banned. Lee Sin gets banned. Azir gets banned. Uh, so the Azir pick tells me, or the Azir ban tells me that they were probably already thinking about Silas going into this match. Um, so we got Ash, Bard, Trundle, Renekton Blind, which is not great, but it's not it's really not the worst pick in the world. Uh, Ezreal is one of the better 80 carries left on the patch. I would have preferred Aphelios. I think I think if they went 
if it went Ash and then Aphelios Bard or something like that, then you're taking away the Bard from the other team. Bard is a much more important champion to get the Renekton. So I think that was a big mistake. Um, the GP pick was extremely good here because you blind picked the Renekton. So now they have a, a Gangplank that's going to be able to outscale. You have the Orianna that's uh, able to respond to Teacher Ma. So when they picked Silas, you had the Ash ultimate, which is pretty good. You had the Bard ultimate, which is a good utility ultimate, but it's really not the kind of ult you want for Silas because for Silas, you want abilities that are going to do uh, increased damage because of the way that his ult his ultimate works. Uh, Subjugate is also not going to work like that. Orianna is a good ultimate for him, and Gangplank ult is a good ult for him, but they didn't know that when they locked in the Silas. So this was very lucky from World Elite. So I think blind picking uh, Silas is bad. Blind picking Renekton isn't horrible, but it's also not necessary in this specific instance where you can take away a Bard, uh, which I think is one of the best champions in the game, especially uh, in the support role. Uh, we get a Graves. This is a Graves. Graves locked in from World Elite, so I do like Graves. I like Ezreal. I like Nautilus. I like a lot of these champions in a vacuum, but the way that they, they function together is not ideal. Uh, against this other team composition. So then, OMG, they were behind in the beginning of the game, but they kept it close enough, and then they were able to win a few big team fights. And that cracked the game open. So actually, so they got a few picks, and then that led to it, like advantageous positions. So like right here, they're already in position to get a dragon. Uh... There was basically just one one bigger fight, and the whole game opened up. Yeah, like right around here. All right, so this this basically started by World Elite trying to make a play into the top lane. The game was on even gold at this point. They go for. They go for a gank onto Icon, which is a good play. Like it's it's a it's a risk you have to kind of take. Teacher Mod goes in, misses the ultimate. Uh, Bard had a good ultimate there, saving the team. And then two players die instantly, or three players die instantly. And then Beishong and Ezreal are both sticking around too long, and they both end up dying as well. So that's a huge mistake. Uh, the Ezreal died, not not Graves. But that's that's just game over basically. The other team outscales you, and you just gave up your entire early game lead. That's that's their only opportunity opportunity they really had. Um, okay, so then in game two, uh, let's go through the draft again. So Ash is an okay, Ash is a fine pick. I'm not complaining about Ash. I just think that when Aphelios is available, you're not doing yourself any favors by picking Ash uh, over Aphelios. I th I think people will realize that eventually. Uh, and it's not necessarily that you should be first picking a Felios. It just means that you could be doing something like you first pick the set, then you have flexibility, and then as long as OMG doesn't pick a Felios, then you just go through the next phase of the pick ban, where it's like you let them, you let blue side, you you let red side show four champions, and then you try to uh, fourth pick a Felios or fifth pick a Felios. That's really that's going to be the next adaptation we see in drafting, I think is just waiting on 80 carries because if they end up banning out the 80 carries then it's fine like as long as you have some as long as you have multiple responses to their team composition it should be fine uh so we have ash which is an okay pick like i said ezreal's an okay pick uh we have the set which is a good flexible pick we have teacher ma or uh we have morgan on renekton morgan's a good renekton player but again we're getting a blind renekton so then it gives omg Chances to outscale, so they lock in Orn. Orn against Renekton is not the worst matchup in the world for Renekton, uh, but it's not the best either. Uh, Orn will become more useful as the game goes on. Is going to be able to give the teammates items and have longer range engage and stuff like that. So Orn's a good champion. Uh, then we have Thresh and we have Silas again. So Silas picked into the Azir. Azir is going to win the laning phase, basically. Well, not win, but Azir is going to have the ability to push the lane continuously. And then Silas is going to have to, like, go even. Like, that's not really what you want from Silas. The game doesn't go that way, which is fortunate for World Elite. But still a bad draft, in my opinion. Uh, then we have the Yumi. This game was pretty scary for a long time. <clears throat> but World Elite uh, 
World Elite was playing very aggressive, which was smart for them. They had to play very aggressive. Let's get into the final draft. And this is where I think we're starting to see some kind of like... They're, they had a game plan going into this, and they just forced the game plan regardless of what the enemy team picked. And that's a mistake. So uh, we have Ash, which again, Ash is not... Ash is not worthy of being first picked on blue side, in my opinion. When we see some of these better teams play, I don't think that that's what they're going to do at all. Uh, we have Volibear. Um, like I said, good flexible champion, but most of the time he's going into the jungle. Not a very threatening top laner. We have Ezreal, fine champion. Trundle has been very impactful in this, in this series and is good specifically against Ezreal because Trundle can throw out his pillar and a lot of the mobility from Ezreal is mitigated. Uh, at least slow down. And it helps the engage from the ash arrows as well. So if you get an ash arrow, you can follow with a pillar. If you get a pillar, you can follow with an ash arrow. If you get an ash arrow, you can get um, a flank from Azir, a flank from Wukong. Just a lot of good team synergy on OMG side. Again, we went with Silas. So World Elite, I mean, I, I didn't mean we like WE. I meant we like World Elite. Uh, what whatever. Uh, they lock in Silas again. So Silas against Azir, they're thinking to themselves, well, you know, we just have to play super aggressive again, get the Silas ahead in the mid lane with ganks, but you can't depend on ganks in a professional game. You just you just can't do that. Uh, you can try, but it just makes it so volatile. So we have Volibear, Silas, Nautilus again. Uh, Missing had a pretty bad series overall as well. And then the last pick was Hecarim. So Hecarim against Wukong is fine. So before we get into the game, let's just see what the matchups are. So it's Wukong against Hecarim. I mean, in the laning phase, it's favored for Hecarim. But you need to create a big advantage because Wukong is going to have good flanks. They're both going to have good flanks. Uh, Wukong is a little nat more naturally tanky, I think, though, with his uh, with his armor passive, stone skin. Um, Trundle against Volibear. Uh, if you're snowballing and you're diving under towers and stuff with the Volibear, great. Otherwise, Trundle's probably better. And he, Trundle has multiple options for uh, Subjugate, but Nautilus is probably going to be the best option for that. Azir against Silas. I think it's Azir favorite overall if you're not getting a bunch of ganks in the landing phase. And then Ash against Ezreal. Ash is favored in the landing phase. Ezreal's going to outscale and be pretty annoying. But they, they function differently. So Ezreal's more of a poke champion. Ash is more of a team fighter. Like a uh, front-to-back team fighter, so they are just fundamentally different. Uh, but again, this game gets out of control early, so just pretty stupid. Uh, I think World Elite probably understood that they were behind and needed to make a big play, and just it just failed hard. So pretty fr pretty frustrating. I was su I was very happy that EDG won that first series. I I was re feeling very smart. And then they just go and throw it all away. So, pretty annoying. Uh, see, and this is what happens. Like, you, you get one good gank from the other jungler, and the, the lane that you thought you were counterpicking ends up losing. And it's like, you're screwed. Very screwed. Uh, so let's look at the odds for tomorrow. Um, another two-game slate. I hate two-game slates. Uh, so we had a plus 198 underdog win and a plus two nine, uh, 283 underdog win. Tomorrow we have LGD against LNG. Um, I'm going to be on LGD. Everybody everybody wants to say that LNG is not that bad, but LGD is a much better team than LNG. It doesn't mean that LNG cannot win. It just means that they shouldn't win. So if you want to play the game theory perspective where it's like, oh, well, you know, all of the ownership is going to be on the other side or I want access to top esports so I need to play LNG, then fine, go ahead. But I think in the long run, you're better off playing the jungle lineups, top lineups, support lineups. You might you might chop more, but if you're looking at making money tomorrow, it's more likely to do that with uh, top esports plus LGD. So I'm not sure how those teams are going to line up, but that's probably the, those are the sides that I'm going to be on. Um, but again, I always I always limit how much money I'm spending on a two game slate unless I feel like I have an edge. And yesterday I felt like I had an edge on EDG plus World Elite. World Elite didn't get it done. Oh no. Let's go cry about it. Um, but that's basically it. So, uh, I have my global power rankings video coming out later today. Um, and 
I might do a separate video for the NBA. I've been pretty close on, well not, I've, I've been making a lot of the right statements on the videos about which players are viable and like which players give you good ownership upside and stuff like that. So going pretty well so far, uh, but I know most people are here for League of Legends. So we'll try to keep this one a little shorter, only about 20 minutes. Uh, thanks for watching and uh, watch out for that rankings video. Peace.